Just trying to get some exercise in. I've kind of been doing nothing for the last few days. Having some trouble sleeping. I feel this might be a good reset to just run the body through some, some work and then uh, you know use that to clear the mind a little bit. I am in Calgary until at least March 5th, probably March 6th. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna make the most of the time while I'm here. We'll uh, see what I can do about designing that next high banker that I'd be using this summer. So we'll get back to the garage after this and uh, see what we can come up with. In this video, I kind of just want to get into the weeds and go into all the fine details of high banker design. So I'm not talking big picture stuff, but just if you were to zoom in on this and say, why is the hopper a certain way? How should your spray bar be set up? What's the advantage of setting it up this way versus that way? How big should it be? Should you go with a carry-in unit or a cart? Um, these things are all gonna kind of interdepend on you know, what you choose for size is going to choose whether or not you need a cart or if you can carry it in. Where is a cart gonna be useful? Where is a cart not going to be useful? Uh, gonna go into the details about the legs. So I designed a set of legs that I think has some distinct advantages over what I was using before. Um, just go into my thought process there. Uh, briefly, I'll talk about what type of mat I'm using and why, what my experience has been with different mats, although that's my least favorite uh, subject. But essentially, I just, I wanna talk about all of the thought process that goes into building a high banker that I am going to be basically building the new version of this. I think I'll call it the Utmost Adventurer. I've got a bunch of these uh, Utmost Explorers sort of in process here. They'll be up on the website soon. But uh, yeah, so let's just go through that process. If you are new here, I'm gonna put chapters down below so you can skip to a specific part that you might be interested in. And if you got value out of that little chapter and you wanna go back and listen to the whole thing, it might be worth watching this start to finish because talking about one subject's probably going to be you know, related to another subject. So right off the bat here, just sort of my thought process on designing a high banker like this. Um, there was a time when I, I just realized that amongst my social circle, I was the gold mining guy. I, I was the guy who knew the most about high bankers and I'd read all the websites. And um, when, when you are the most knowledgeable person in the room, you're not learning anymore. You're not gonna figure anything out. So I, I make a specific effort to try to approach everything with a beginner's mindset. If I see somebody out at the river and they're using a box and they're just starting out, it's sort of you know cobbled together. There's all these little different things they've done. I guarantee you one of those little things that they've done is something I haven't thought of. I'm gonna learn from them. And so in you watching this video, if you're a beginner and, and you're interested in this, then you're probably gonna pick up a lot. If you're more experienced, then just come at this with that beginner's mindset and there'll be some little detail somewhere in this video that you probably will find useful. And of course, if you're not interested in high banker design, this will probably just come across as a bunch of verbal diarrhea and might not be that you know fun adventure video that you're used to. You can just skip it, go to the next one. So right off the bat, that first question that I sort of posed was size of high banker, how big, how wide do you need? And should you go with a cart or should you not go with a cart, like a carry-in unit? Um, obviously, if you choose that you want a large enough high banker, that sort of means that you're stuck with a cart. There's, there's no option to get around that. But one thing that I noticed is with this beach box, this is a 24 inch wide, about five foot long box. It's awesome, super easy to carry around on sort of Alberta's lazy gravel bars. But if you get into those really big, heavy boulders that you'd see out in you know the Fraser River, or you're going on an animal trail, there's trees you're bumping into, a cart just isn't practicable. And so that's where if you can get away with a smaller box like this, my goal in designing the next high banker is I want to emphasize lightweight transportability. So what I'm building is something for myself. I can't put myself in everybody's situation, in everybody's shoes and say, this is the best high banker for your situation. So I'm thinking about what I want to use it for. And I typically found that the cart 
He's good in Alberta, but when I have a boat to access a gravel bar, I can just carry this in just fine. And I want to make this more compact, but still have the same gold recovery so that it's easier to hike into locations out in British Columbia, just for my own personal use. I'm gonna set that down here for now because I don't really know what I'm doing with my hands. Um, the rough top conveyor belt that I, I used in this, you had to use it like an, any fine textured mat. So whether you're using like indoor outdoor carpet, like an AstroTurf um, moss without expanded on top, you're gonna want very little water flow, just enough to move the material off the surface. And in, in doing so, it's not gonna process a ton of material. So you're gonna see that little line of black sand forming like a bit of a wave as it's going down the sluice and you gotta feed it a little bit slower. Um, with the miner's moss that I'm using now, I, I did notice that it's able to keep up with about the same feed rate as this sluice. So 24 inches wide here, 12 inches wide here, two different mats, this is able to keep up in terms of feed rate. So that's something to consider. Obviously you could put miner's moss in a beach box like this or at one point I had a double level setup in this so that this box gave you the same recovery as this box just by splitting the flow into one sitting right on top of the other. That had a few issues that um, maybe I'll, I'll get into later on in this video or that might even be a future video depending how, on how long this video is. So for a cart you're going to want like the, the, the Cadillac is going to be air filled tires. So I'll just have a quick uh, close up of this cart. So these are uh, bicycle tires essentially, air filled tubes. They really absorb the bumps going over rocks. This is a little cart. Um, it was a, a bike trailer that I got used off Kijiji. And it's, it's really awesome. I'm just gonna show you real quick how, how this works. So with the heavy part, your pump can sit up front and it sort of cantilevers and makes it really easy to hold. But there's just a little clip under here and then you slide your wheel out and it's easy to slide it in the back of your car, your pickup truck, whatever it is. And then you just slip that thing back on, set her down. Your motor goes inside. And then because that has some weight to it, the back of this thing is like super easy. It just rolls around like nothing. You can throw all your gear in here. Super convenient. Why would anyone ever use anything else, right? Now, I didn't have too much of an issue using this. Like for example, if you go to Devon, Alberta, go to a perfect pizza, get yourself a nice big pizza, head to the north side of the river, park, and you're at Prospector's Point. Any time of year when there's gravel available, you'll find gold there. It's not like the best place to go by any means, but that type of situation, cart is beautiful. You just walk everything out onto the gravel bar, walk home at the end of the day. But if you have something like this, I mean, first you gotta carry the box out, then you gotta carry your pump out, like it's gonna be multiple trips, and that's where I want to actually shrink this thing down a little bit so I can carry the box easily in one hand. If you're out hiking a game trail, for example, a cart like this, you're gonna bump into things, um, really big, heavy boulders and rocks and stuff, super steep things. A lot of places that I go hiking, uh, I literally need one hand to hold onto a tree. I can have something in one hand and I got to hold onto another hand going down. You're just not going to use a cart in those situations. And then I specifically am jet boat mining here in Alberta, which means I just pull up to the gravel bar. I don't even take the pump out of the boat if I don't have to. And I, I run my hose up, I carry this up, no problem. So the next high banker I build is going to be a no cart unit. Obviously you can add wheels to anything. Uh, I had an, one of the first high bankers I ever built. You would have a high banker like this and I just used the front wheel from a bicycle and it just sat out the front like this and it clipped in underneath with a couple of bolts and you'd use the thing like a wheelbarrow. So I have a few uh, brackets underneath and again I just welded a nut onto the metal underneath. So you just sort of screw that on there. It didn't take too long. And you could technically run the sluice with that there if you keep clearing out underneath and stuff, but you know, for your cleanup, put a tray down there, it'll kind of get in the way. So figure, just take it off, but you just lift her up, your whole thing goes like a wheelbarrow. You drive it around and... There's always options to cartify a non 
specific card like this. But as far as the width is concerned, I've determined that with this 12 inch wide Miner's Moss and Expanded, um, four shovels per minute seems to work pretty well. Five shovels per minute is pretty good as well. You get to that six shovels a minute if they're big sandy shovels, and this really depends on your situation. If you're dealing with uh, sandy material, one shovel goes in here, maybe three quarters of that shovel goes through your screen and into the box. Whereas in other areas, there might not be a lot of sand and it's all bigger gravel. So you put that shovel in and three quarters of that shovel goes right into tailings. Your box only has to deal with 25% of it. So feed rate is going to depend on location, but the only time you'd really need a wider box is if you've got that nice loose gravel that's easy to shovel, high sand content, and you can really move material. It's pretty easy to say once every 12 seconds, five shovels a minute, steady state, um, pretty much like it's close to that yard an hour and a 12 inch box will keep up with that. If I had my ideal setup, there's times when I want to shovel a little bit quicker. I'd say an 18 inch wide box of this Miner's Moss is going to be a good number, but I don't think that I would want to do it unless I was going to go with a cart like this. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to have a box that's in that 12 inch wide range and then have a way of doubling that up either with an extension or a piece that's built inside we can talk about that in the future where you can actually take that 12 inch box and turn it into a 24 inch box or a 10 inch box into a 20 inch box um, just to get a little bit more out of this form factor so the next question is length how long should your sluice be and there's a lot of different ways about going about this different solutions um, basically having a longer box lets you get away with either an imperfect setup or, or sort of not ideal conditions for the gold that you're capturing. So if you have a, a sluice mat that's maybe holding on to about 25% or sorry, holding on to about 75% of what you're putting into it and losing 25% in a three foot run. So that's, that's the results I was getting with my dream mat mini mat. Uh, so this stuff right here, um, I have a three foot long sheet for this. And that was about what I was getting is you lose 25% in a three foot box. But you can get around that because your hopper could have some recovery. So if your hopper, like let's say you throw 10 grams of gold at this box. If your hopper pulls out three grams, then you're only going to lose 25% of seven grams, not 25% of the full 10 grams. So you're going to be doing better. And if you have this box, let's say it's a four foot long box and right at the top, you've got like some miner's moss with a, some sort of a punch plate or something on top of it for a foot, that's going to act as a bit of a buffer to hold onto the black sands and let them bleed into the mat a little bit better. But it's also going to capture a large percentage of your gold. And then Again, your, your main mat is going to have less total gold to lose in the first place. Obviously, if you were to make your box six feet long, if the first box captures 75% of the gold, or the first three feet captures 75% of the gold, and then the next part of the box is going to probably capture about 75% of what was lost. So that's going to bring your total percentage up to something that's quite acceptable. But can you also say, you're losing that much because you're overfeeding the mat. So with the, with the dream mat, for example, if I were to run it pretty slow to where I was holding on to gold and it wasn't just uh, scalping out if I walked away for two minutes, um, it was having a hard time keeping up with my regular shoveling feed rate. So you're gonna lose a lot of gold because it basically just hides all the riffles. You've got a big sandbar in there and you know, it's not very effective. So you turn up the water flow, give it a little bit more slope, and now those cells are active, or your miner's moss is active, or whatever mat you have is actually exchanging out and exposing the riffles and holding on to what you're feeding it, because it's not being overfed now that it has enough water flow. But then you walk away and it sort of scalps out and, you know, it's too aggressive uh, for this fine, flat, flaky gold. So if you were to have just a longer box, yeah, it's going to help, but you're not giving it the ideal conditions in the first place. Could you have a box that's twice as wide? So should you go with a 
two foot wide box that's three feet long or a one foot wide box that's six feet long. And, and that's kind of a, a tough balance to, to figure out. How's the geometry work? Where do you really want to go with that? But I would typically say if you are steady state shoveling more than that mat can handle, I don't care how long your box is, that gold's just going to keep working down the box, down the box, down the box. And with a real long tom like that, you're going to get to that point where it's like after a certain number of hours, the gold's just migrated down far enough in that box that it's time to do a cleanup. I personally don't like doing cleanups in the middle of the day. I'd rather just start at the beginning of the day, work to the end of the day, and then do a cleanup each night. And to do that, you need a box that's wide enough to keep up with your feed rate. Now, if you are running in Alberta, this fine, flaky, super flat gold, especially in a beach box like this, where that water's just super, super slow over the sluice, what's interesting is the time it takes for the water to go from the top of your sluice to the bottom of a three foot sluice might actually be similar to the time it takes to go down a six foot long sluice with a more aggressive water flow. So even though your sluice is, you know, three or four feet long, if you're running it real, real relaxed, um, you're actually like the time that the gold is in there to be captured is the same as a longer sluice. And so you can get away with a shorter sluice. And so long as it's wide enough, to keep up with that feed rate, then you're not gonna have any issues. Another thing you wanna do for that is prevent the surge. So every time you throw a shovel in, there's a ton of material, it just fills up a portion of your mat, and then it slowly bleeds off the top while you're off getting your next shovel. That's where having some sort of recovery in the hopper can really help, because all of the lights just get washed off the hopper down the sluice, and then as you're getting your next shovel, the black sand and the gold is lingering in there some of it's getting caught, but some of it is then feeding down into your primary recover down, recovery down here, and you're able to hold on to that. So my opinion is I would rather have a, like a mat that is wide enough to keep up with me and then just find a point down the mat where you're no longer getting losses and say three feet's long enough or four feet is long enough. Um, personally, I think for the box that I'm going to build, well, I'd like to do a four foot box, there's two factors. One, my break is three feet. You can easily build a longer sluice with that three foot break, um, just, you know, multiple sections going together. And you could actually take advantage of that. So the top section would be a box and then it drops down about half an inch into the, the next section. So you can have two separate pieces of miner's moss and you can actually do a top box clean out really easily. But for what I'm using it for, I don't want a four foot box. I want to try to shrink this thing a little bit, but I want to do that without losing any gold recovery. So one of the ways I'm going to do that is by building the hopper in such a way that it's going to hold on to some gold. And then uh, I'll, I'll get into the details about this soon. <laughs> First of all, let's talk about the actual shape of the hopper. So when I had this box set up here, um, I, I had a narrow hopper initially, and as I was shoveling in, if you ever missed, you'd, you'd miss the hopper and you'd put a rock straight into the sluice, and then this perfect setup you've got down here, a rock's gonna be sitting in here, and it's kinda just gonna be forming a little island around it, scouring out gold as it rolls down. You don't want that. So I, end, like, I like the narrow hopper because all of the water that you're putting into the full width of the sluice is in a narrow spot contained getting blasted, which is great. <laughs> but if I spread the hopper a little wider, then essentially the same amount of water is gonna be going into a wider area. It's less concentrated. It's not gonna break up material as much. If you're working in nice loose sandy material, no worries, that's totally fine. But if you are working sort of mucky clay, organic stuff like that, you really want to be blasting water at that thing. And that's where I'd rather, so like the narrow hopper with some nice big wings on it so that, you know, if, if you miss a shovel, it's still going to go into the hopper, but there's this concentrated destruction zone in here. And then it rolls down the bottom of your sluice. So a little close up view of the hopper on this sluice box right here. When I first built it, it was just the typical L shaped design. So this hopper was just a straight shot. And I actually initially 
put this screen in the bottom of the hopper. If your hopper is just a straight piece like this, it's easier to manufacture that way for sure. But ideally what you want is you want sort of a flat area up top where the material can sit and get sprayed and not just slide right off. And then by the time it gets to your screen or your grizzly, you want it to slide right off that grizzly. So you want your grizzly to be nice and steep and then you want the main hopper to be a little bit shallower. And that involves, you know, cutting more aluminum. It's a little bit harder to manufacture, but I think there's a significant advantage to doing that. The other thing is how much screen or how much grizzly should you have? If you're gonna have a grizzly, we're gonna look at this box right here. The grizzly's only gonna be down at the bottom of the box. Uh, you just can't have a grizzly that's full length. But you could run a screen right here, or you could have a screen that goes the entire way. So initially, that's what I was thinking when I had this screen. I was thinking, great, there's, there's more holes. It's not gonna plug up as often because I've got more surface area. But the material doesn't clean very well because this whole screen was held up off the bottom. Water would spray at this screen and then the like, like so if the screen's just down in the hopper like this, it sprays through and all that gurgling action's happening down underneath against the bottom of my hopper. I want that gurgling action to be happening on all the stuff that's sitting on the screen that I'm trying to wash. So what I ended up doing was I just covered this with a piece of aluminum and then everything here is getting blasted and churned and then only when it gets to the part where it actually needs to be classified is it letting that water down and out through the screen. So here all the water stays up on the surface and it's not just going through the screen. So that means that a design like this, this is sort of just cobbled together. I had a random piece sitting here and I wanted to extend the hopper out a little bit, but you're gonna want this entire top area to have some sort of a moss to act as that you know, buffer and you're gonna hold some gold in that. And then at the bottom you have your grizzly. Now, the screen I'm using here worked really, really, really well. And when you're dealing with grass, grass covers the screen, but you just take a brush and you brush the screen and it all comes off the screen just fine. I was using a grizzly because I decided that, well, hey, the grizzly is gonna let stuff off of that easier than a screen. I'm not entirely sure like it did save a little bit of time. It just slides off the Grizzly easier than it slides off a screen, but it wasn't enough of an advantage to make up for the fact that these are all flexible bars. Maybe I could have had a shorter Grizzly, but you're gonna get odd shaped rocks that fall between this screen. Even though it's a very finely spaced screen, it's not classifying anywhere near as good as an actual like screen would. So for Alberta, when fine gold is the target and you're just, just after that fine flaky gold, I would argue that you go with a screen. Now the size of screen, uh, right here I've got two sizes of screen. I've got this stuff which is sturdier, it's stiffer, it holds its shape a little bit better. And then I've got this stuff which is a little bit weaker, needs more support, but finer holes. In my experience of using these screens, this stuff gives you that better structure I'd say better durability, but I have hit screens like this with a crazy amount of rocks and they're still going hard today. Um, but I, I would say that this size of screen, you're not losing any recovery going with a slightly bigger screen. The next thing to talk about here is going to be your spray bar. A lot of people, you will have a spray bar running down each side up here and the walls are typically lower. So it's a little bit easier to get in there with your hand because the, the side just ends down here instead of being this high. Um, those full side spray bars, they're, they're good, they get everything wet, they're better for um, softer digging gravel and sand. Uh, I wouldn't say they're better for that, but they work for that. Where they really fall apart is if you're throwing like grass with root balls and stuff in here and you need to break it apart, or like nothing's really gonna break apart pure clay, but that muddy, mucky, clay-y stuff, it's just, it's not really breaking it apart. So you gotta get in there with your hand and, and clean everything up. The idea with this setup is it's blasting one solid straight stream that's going to actually cut through stuff like a bit of a laser beam and break apart clumps and really get into it. And that's why I like having this spraying up like this. This is a big churning, frothing mess. And I find that that does a better job of cleaning up all of your gravel without having to get in there with your hand. So 
it's, it's easy plumbing too. There's, there's less pipe involved. The only disadvantage to this setup is the rocks have to make it through this gap. So you actually need to raise this up a little bit to make sure there's enough room. If you put a big rock here, that it's able to actually roll out the bottom of your sluice. Uh, this is the leg that I, I, I bought a leg kit from a guy called Paul up in Edmonton. And I would say it's a good leg. He, he builds really good products. I, I like his stuff. Um, but I noticed there was a few little things that maybe weren't quite as convenient as they could be. First thing is because this is right tight to the side of the sluice here, in order to give it a little wider stance, it bends out at the bottom. And what that means, this might seem, <laughs> might seem hard to, hard to uh, follow what I'm saying here, but when I wanna take this thing down for transport, I want, I want the legs, I don't necessarily need the legs out of the sluice, I just want them to slide all the way up. So I want this leg to be able to slide right up flush to the bottom of my sluice, but it can only ever slide up this far. So just to demonstrate that, that's as high as this will go. So it's always sort of sitting up awkwardly off the ground like that. And then with the box all set up like this, it's actually kind of awkward to, like you gotta pick the whole box up to take that off the bottom. And while it's totally doable, it's just one extra step. And so that's where with the design that I went with, I'm able to take this leg and I'm able to slide it all the way up, out of the way. Now it's sticking up into the air, but that's not getting in the way when it's sitting in my boat, sitting in the back of my car. They're short enough to fit in the car. And then when I get out to the river, I simply loosen this up, drop it down, tighten it up, and off I go. The other thing is, there's actually sort of two parts to this one, but square in a square, round in a circle. Um, because of the circle, when, when the bolt presses this into the circle, it actually, let's see if I can get this to point up here. Because this is like a circle in a circle design, it's sort of like a saddle. So the circle centers itself in that saddle and it, you, don't, you don't have to tighten it that much for it to sort of lock into the saddle at the top and the bottom. Whereas with the square design, there's, oops, knocking stuff down here. So with this design here, I'm just going to lift this up to, to demonstrate. If I just loosely tighten this, right? I'm pressing on it, it's not going anywhere, but it, it has that motion, right? Like if this was machined so tight that it had no wiggle, it'd be really hard to move up and down. You get one grain of sand in there, it's gonna get stuck. So you have to have it a little bit loose. And then because it's loose, here I press it, it doesn't move. But when I press and jiggle, well, I just jiggled on the far side. <laughs> Um, to show you how, how they can drop like that. And so you wind up having to, to tighten this quite a bit to make sure that when you're throwing giant shovels on this thing and it's all full of water, your legs don't start slipping and you know messing up the angle that you've carefully set up on your box. That also happens when these little feet sink into the gravel. So I went with slightly larger feet. Um, depending on the ground, sometimes you just have to put a piece of wood under anyways, but this should give you about 50% of the PSI per foot. So it should stay on the surface a little bit better having a, a bigger foot than a little foot. But because you have to tighten so hard on this, what happens is this actual piece right here. So I just got this dinky little thumb screw that came with it and that was just useless without like pliers. I don't like tools with my legs. It's gotta be tool free. So I got these little guys here and I can show you on the far side. Um, this one right here, so I'll just get a knee under here to hold it up. But you can see, you see how that one's already bent? Like it's, it's right here, it's kind of bent. Because these stick out the side of the box, if this slides around in your boat or in the back of your truck, this will hit the side and you can bend these a little bit. And even one that wasn't bent, when I was out in the field, I actually, because I was wrenching these things tight, like I'll take a screwdriver, stick it in there and sort of tighten them up nice and tight to make sure they don't go anywhere. And just through fatigue over time, that thing actually sheared off on me. One thing that's been really annoying me <laughs> is it's, it's keeping going out of level. These have been great legs, except the little hardware that came with it were these thumb screws. And so you would have needed like a plier, a pair of pliers to actually tighten them. So I, have, I put these things on because they're a little bit bigger for your thumbs and even wrenching them real tight. When you're just beating the crap out of your sluice box, throwing rocks at it, they, they start to work loose. So 
you take a screwdriver and just or a stick and you can kind of snug them up and it's been working but I actually snapped one off in a leg before on a previous hive anchor um, and then you're screwed because one leg just won't move it's like snapped off right in there I was able to finish that trip by adjusting the other three but my suggestion and something I might do on my next build is one size up on this hardware I think this is quarter inch I'd go up to uh, you know five sixteenths or three eighths and that would totally eliminate that problem and just be a little bit safer as far as not having to worry about accidentally snapping it because when I broke that it wasn't like I was reefing on it it was actually trying to loosen it that it just snapped right off so I had a leg at full length that was pinned in sheared off it's you know it's really hard to drill that out once it's snapped and so if I was you know taking this somewhere really far away like this was my box I was taking up to Nome or you know it's a six hour drive to your claim or whatever you don't want something like that to ruin your trip so I went to a size up a bolt so this it's a stainless steel bolt it is a, a size bigger this is five sixteenths as opposed to one quarter inch significantly stronger nice big thumb screw comes with it and I, it's just if if this were to have a size up a bolt and a size up of this I think they may have actually already changed that because they were having enough issues with these little quarter inch things um, that would be a big improvement and then the final thing is this is an entire tube full length stuff can get in there and make it hard to slide up and down here it's just a circle at the top circle at the bottom and there's no way for rocks and gravel to like fill up this tube so if I go over here this was one of my first prototypes um, just do it like this so it's this really nicely precise fit in here but you know it's a little bit tight right like it's if you got a little bit of sand a little bit of dirt in there you're gonna have a lot of issues lock it up she's good and solid and especially even let me show you this box this here was another one of my prototypes so you've got a pretty big space around where the legs gonna go so if I just loosen that off like it's there's a lot of room there and it's really jiggly and then because it's round and round you lock it in and it's rock solid but if you go out in the winter and you get a little bit of ice and water like there's water involved it's gonna fill this tube up and it's kind of gonna plug it up and you gotta bash it with a rock in order to you know get this thing to move again whereas you're not gonna have that issue when you've just got these two little wings how strong is that stuff it's crazy strong that is 12 gauge it's like significantly thicker than it needs to be you can hop up like hop around in these boxes so I'm just gonna <laughs> I know this is this has gone on way too long and I'm just rambling at this point so if I have even posted this video apologize for any of the rambling hopefully it was interesting and again any specific thing if you have a comment say it I'll listen and I'll try to do a more polished version, maybe a specific video, just about one thing at a time. But uh, just before we go, I'll show you, this is the, the Explorer. It's my little high banker that I've been working on. So I'll just set this camera down over there. Um, essentially, there's, there's a handle here. Um, so you throw your bilge pump in here, your battery, your hose, it all wraps up in here real nice. This piece is clipped on. You can grab this thing and you can carry it like whatever angle you want. You know, it's, it's not going anywhere. And then basically when it's time to go into high banker mode, what you would do is you just pull this apart. This comes out, flip it upside down. And there's these little holes down here get those lined up and now it's into the bottom and again you can literally lift the entire hive anchor just from that leg down here any angle you want it's held um, these are just shorter versions of the full-size leg and you want to know how strong they are like it's gonna tear out of the side of this sluice before it does anything to this and just to show you that it can be done um, I wouldn't recommend you do this but you basically just step inside the thing no issue no issue whatsoever and I guarantee you that me standing in this is going to put a lot more weight on these legs than you'd ever get from shoveling it into your high banker so 
there's the, uh, the zoomed in version of the legs. Um, one more thing to talk about, actually, now that I'm uh, looking at these two side by side, is how do you deal with a creek where you have coarse gold and fine gold? So fine gold, you, you put everything through this little screen, you're good to go, even with a slightly larger screen like what I have in here, which is this stuff right here. Um, if you have some larger pickers or stuff that could potentially slide over this, you see people, especially in Australia, excuse me, um, you, you see people take this type of stuff and it's in their high banker and they'll run a metal detector over their tailings because everything that you shovel into the, the typical high banker, just it can slide off and you know, what if you missed a nugget? So if I'm carrying a little box like this, I don't want to have to carry a metal detector with me at the same time. Like the whole point is to be light, compact, you know, fast and light. And by putting this in here, you dump everything in here. Let's say there's a nugget in there. You're cleaning everything out. Everything sinks down to the bottom. You slide everything out. If the nugget's down at the bottom here, it's probably not going to move with your fingers. Um, this is actually a really nice smooth edge of the screen. Like you can run your fingers over there. You won't nick a glove or nick your fingers. And then you bring everything up here. You can look at it if you really want. So if you're cleaning bedrock and you're right in that bottom crevice, you want to be careful with that. You know, you can pull everything out onto here just to make sure. But your nugget's actually gonna stay in here. So nuggets, coarse gold's gonna stay in here. Fine gold, we have all the advantages of this nice screened, perfect flow rate. You know, my favorite current mat. I'm, I'm open to change, but the miner's moss is gonna capture that fine gold really, really well. And you're getting both coarse and fine. The second you move into high banker mode like this, you either need some sort of a nugget trap in the hopper, which I'm gonna be looking into, or you need to do a coarse screen or a grizzly that big holes and then a narrower, steeper, faster flowing sluice that's going to deal with all the, that big material and capture any big nuggets. And then at this end, you run another screen off this end, really fine screen, and you come back in this direction for your final wider, um, more classified sluice. I think it's the... Uh, the Flying Dutchman, if you Google, that it's sort of like a zigzag design like that. And that's a way where it's like, okay, I'm going to make sure that my nuggets are in the first sluice, my fine gold's in the final sluice. But to do that, I mean, that just gets big. Like that's mini wash plant territory as opposed to something you can just hike into the bush two kilometers, no worries, right? Um, and so for a little bilge pump, battery powered, hike it around wherever you want to go set up, this has a slight disadvantage that when you're in those perfect conditions of sandy gravel, everything's fine, you just dump it in, it slides off, you're good. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit slower to process because you're going to dump it into here and you're going to have to clean it out. I've used this in the field. I swear I'll make a video of this thing running as soon as it's not minus 20 outside. Um, but it, it's, it doesn't slow you down that bad. However, if you get a situation with muck, clay, your, your typical high banker, you're going to be putting your hopper down at a low angle anyways. You're going to be getting in there, cleaning it up by hand anyways. So you're really at no disadvantage doing it like this, but you have the advantage of knowing that you're not going to miss that big nugget or that picker. Hope there's some sort of uh, cohesive idea of like something that you got out of this. This is roughly the shape of the sluice that I'm going to be going with for the utmost adventurer, we'll call it. Um, this box is 42 inches long, so three foot six inches. The top six inches of this box are a slick plate. That slick plate isn't capturing any gold, and instead of actually working like, oh, a nice slick plate to increase the recovery of the top of my box, it's speeding up that water too much, and the recovery for the top six inches of that box is actually losing gold, like it's scouring out. So by eliminating that top six inch, um, slick plate, I basically only need a three foot box to get the same, same results. So if you think about it, that's as long as the recovery area in this box, side by side. Next, it's 12 inches wide at the bottom, but it's eight inches wide at the top. So if you had 20 gallons per minute running through this box, you'd be at a rate of 30 gallons per minute per foot at the eight inch mark up here. And then as it widens out, you'd come down to that 20. So you're sort of going to hit 
different velocities, different water flows as you're going down the box and as it's expanding out. And it kind of lets you, instead of having different types of mats, different types of riffles as you go down, you've got what I've currently found that I, I like, which is the expanded over moss, but you're hitting it with different amounts of water flow over the length of your sluice. Just looking at this, you think like that is tiny. That is just a baby. That's just pretty much one of these things. Um, how the heck have I just made this seem like it's the same recovery as you get in there? Like it's, it's a pretty close shot. And so by setting this thing up with a really good hopper, which the hopper is going to be full length all the way back to here, three foot long hopper. It's gonna be a flat hopper for two thirds of it. And you're just gonna have your screen down at the very bottom end here. You're gonna do a lot of cleaning up here. Um, it's going to be the closest thing that I can imagine to trommel-like performance. It's not gonna be a trommel, but for something this small and compact, I think this is gonna have some of the best, you know, just destruction power in the hopper. Uh, I've got a few ideas for that that I'll be working on. And then in order to make this sort of that next level, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out whether I wanna go with the double decker within this box. You can just have an insert that slides in, uh, a manifold up at the top and you go with a double decker. Or if it makes more sense, let's say I have a leg here and a leg here, I could actually have an extension so that fits between these two legs. It would just sandwich inside of that. And then that extension can be um, attached to the bottom here. And the extension going out the bottom would make the box maybe 18 inches longer. And that is where I would potentially go to the double level. So I would have maybe an 18 to a, a 24 inch long sluice that was double level. So here's where you split from 12 inches into now 24 inch wide box right down here that hangs off the bottom end. And then that would only need to come with you when you're dealing with that ultra fine flower gold and anywhere else, this box right here would be awesome. Like I said, just a little box like this. I, I'm doing significantly better than I was when running a single three foot length of this moss or of this uh, mini mat stuff. Although the mini mat was super easy to clean, um, minimal concentrates at the end of the day, there are advantages to all these rubber mats, um, but you, you just need to compensate for the fact that they're not gonna be giving you quite the same recovery in the same area as something like moss. When it comes to mats, guys, there's, there's tons of different ideas out there. Um, you've got your La Trap sluices. Drop riffles are awesome, especially in fine gold. I recently got this uh, from Infinity Prospecting, a little three inch cleanup sluice, little spirals in there. Um, I'm, I'm gonna be doing some tests on this kind of thing. So I know drop riffle sluices work well. I like them. Um, I'm not sure if you were to take this type of matting and put that into this sluice, how it would compare side by side. Um, I am currently thinking just based on my experiences that I would rather use moss than this, but I'm going to, I'm going to give it a test and I'm going to run it side by side. Not, I can't really run this side by side cause that's a, a three inch sluice, but this here, six inch sluice. I like this dream mat micro mat. I think they call it, um, or micro cell or something. Not the mini cell, the mini cells, this stuff wasn't impressed but this stuff seems to do a really good job of clean out. So I could maybe test, you know, how concentrated is your gold in this versus that dream mat stuff and just sort of let you know my honest opinion on that kind of stuff. You know, hey, <laughs> the guys, they gave me this. They're like, hey, Kyle, have this. Maybe, uh, maybe you show it on your channel. The way I've just talked about it, maybe they'll never want to give me something again because I'm not just swooning over how amazing it is. Um, I've just, I've never been really blown away with a lot of these rubber new fan dangled swirly spiral mat things. But um, if, if I didn't have a cleanup sluice, this is going to bring your material down to almost nothing. Like just looking at it, I can tell you it's going to work uh, pretty good. So uh, it'd, be, it'd be really cool to, to do a test. Also, the one, one thing I'd actually really like to do is if we look at this stuff, you got your your V-rib at the front, just that's where you'd spoon stuff into. And then you got these drop riffles. And it's basically just literally like a routered out, like if you took a, a two by four and a router and you cut little slots in it and then put sides on it, that's what you're dealing with. 
And then you've got these little spirals that spiral down. And when you see this stuff running, you can actually see there's a little line of gold with black sand sort of down one side where it's sort of spiraling down. But is that just another drop riffle with a little fancy shape? Or um, is, it, is it doing something special? And I think a good way to test is I'll do a cleanup, I'll run some gold through here, and then just sort of prop it up like this so the water pools inside, take a snuffer bottle, and I'll snuffer all of these into one snuffer bottle, and then I'll snuffer everything out of here in another snuffer bottle. And we'll see, like, are these concentrating, like, do you get more gold to black sand ratio in these or in these, and do you get more gold total in these or in these? And if, they're, if, if these slots are actually winning, then yeah, this is clearly just marketing, you know, whatever. <laughs> Which, even if it is marketing, if the whole box as a whole works, then that's fine, right? But uh, yeah, I'm kind of curious how effective these are compared to just a regular drop riffle. Because I, I was a little surprised to actually see these drop riffles. I thought it would just all be spirals, but I don't know, guys. Drop riffles are good. Miner's Moss is good. Uh, a lot of different mats out there are going to work. Um, right now, just design philosophy wise, it's like I found a mat that works. I might as well um, go with it because I, I know sort of what it can handle in terms of shovels per minute. I know that it handles surging quite well. I know that it's, despite it being miner's moss, it, it's still pretty easy to clean out. One final, I swear this is the final last bit of, holy crap, this is a long video. Sorry. Um, right here, there you go. The, the final step, this is what I'm using in my, uh, in my sluice. I've got a, a supplier lined up down in the States where I, I'll order a giant roll of the stuff, but uh, it's a backed miner's moss and it's about three eighths of an inch thick. And the, this I actually haven't used yet. I've, I've been using, um, just show you, that's coarser, so. I suspect this is gonna do better with the low water flow, fine gold. Um, some people just run bare moss as well, but the people I've seen doing this that really know what they're doing, they do have a, a expanded metal on top. It just lets you run slightly, slightly more water flow while still retaining your gold, so you can run more yards per hour over the same surface area. But this stuff here, pretty thin, right? And it's a backed moss. This stuff here, unbacked moss, so I, I was running just like little V-rib underneath it. And it's, it's good stuff, it ca captured gold really, really well. Just as good as this. But if you're gonna say this and this, they both capture just the same, that is a lot more concentrates than that. Now, Emily Rydell, uh, up in Bering Sea Gold, Nome, Alaska, she actually has multiple layers of miner's moss, like one layer of miner's moss, another layer of miner's moss in that big 10 inch dredge of hers because there's so much water flow. So the less water flow you have, the less deep into the moss you're going to get any of your material um, settling. So when I ran this stuff, you, you run your first shovel and all the blonde sands just fill it up. And then it's only the top 50% of it roughly that's actually exchanging out. So the top half is all black sand at the end of the day. And the bottom of the half is still just that blonde sand. It never even got moved. So if you're running really slow water flow, this is just gonna get you more concentrates. So this would blow out more gold if you were running your box really hot. But if you're not, if you're running it for that fine flower gold, it's, it's just a better like less concentrates at the end of the day with all the same advantages of this stuff. That's all I know so far. <laughs> um, my experience along the way, essentially. And uh, yeah. Don't use quarter inch hardware on your legs if you weld them up yourself. Buy my legs if you're gonna buy legs. Uh, they, they're legit awesome. I'll, I'll do more videos of them later, but the design has Conceptually, it was good. Real world, they're amazing. Um, website will have more products up, updated, hopefully by the time this video comes out. And uh, yeah, lots of stuff going on in here. I'm gonna be working on turning this into a lightweight version of this that's just slightly improved in every way. And uh, that'll be coming out at some point. 
And uh, yeah, until sort of that first week of March, I'll be able to get back out again and prospect. More, more videos here in the garage, hopefully a lot more concise. Anyways, thanks for watching everyone. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one.